Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwoven's Nest. If you've clicked on this video, you're looking for some spring inspiration. I have this crate that I painted and stained a couple of years ago. It has done its duty and it's time to get a makeover. Because this is different colors, I want to start out with a base of the same color. So I'm using Cocoa Bean Chalk Paint by Rust-Oleum. It's a beautiful dark brown. And I'm just going to go over the areas that are not brown and make sure that they're completely covered. I'm going to give the crate two coats of chalk paint in white. I am using just a latex paint that I added some talc to to make it more opaque. This is a DIY chalk paint recipe that I picked up from Holly over at Hot Humble Pie. I do have the recipe down in my description box if you're interested and you can do this with any color of paint. Before I go any further, I want to let you know that my video is part of a spring fun collab that's hosted by Liana DIY. We have some amazing creators part of this collab and our guest for this month is Crafting with Maria. Please make sure you go down to my comments and my description box, click on that playlist link and go see what everyone else has created for spring. You are sure to be inspired. So as I was painting it white, I remembered that I don't like the really big gaps of this crate. So I'm taking a shim. These are just wood shims that you can pick up at Home Depot. They come 40 in a pack and I believe these are about 15 inches long. So I'm just going to take my measurement and use my miter shears to trim it. I'm just going to add the shims with some hot glue on either side of the crate. I also wanted the same color for the shims, so I'm going to go ahead and use the same cocoa bean chalk paint and just give them a really rough coat. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to be putting some florals in this crate, so I decided also to put a little bit of reinforcement down at the bottom. Again, the holes are just a little bit too big, and I just wanted to make sure that nothing falls through. The two coats are dry now, and this is where I can do my distressing. I'm using some really rough grit sandpaper because I don't want to have to sand till my arm falls off. This is just an easy way to pull off quite a bit of paint very easily. And I want that brown to show through. So that's why I'm doing it fairly rough. It's making it look pretty chippy and that's the look I'm going for. So the only thing that was a little bit difficult was getting in between these grooves. I had to kind of wedge the sandpaper in between the grooves and then just run it across. I created a decal on my Cricut, but I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm not going to put the decal on because I wanted this to be a really rustic looking crate and the vinyl would look nice and crisp and new. So what I'm doing is weeding out all of the letters and I'm going to use this as a stencil. The one thing you have to make sure of when you're weeding out the letters is to make sure that any E's or A's or O's have those little interior pieces. Here I lost the A, the little part that needs to show the A, but I did find it in my little pile of scraps there. So then I just put it back on. So that's just the one thing that I can caution you of. If you're using your Cricut and you want to create a stencil, you need to be very aware that all of your inside of the letters needs to stay there. I put a piece of clear transfer tape right on top of the decal and then pulled the backing off. Now I'm going to go ahead and place it where I want it to be and then very gently I'm going to pull off the transfer tape making sure that the stencil stays stuck down and again I don't lose any of those little pieces in between. This little pink tool is a dollar store find, so be on the lookout for those. You don't need to have the expensive Cricut tools to work with decals. I'm going to use a makeup sponge and some chalk paint, and this is the best way that I know how to do stencils. I love using these makeup sponges, and I just found a tip from my sweet friend Jamie over at Simple Roots Simple Living. She said put a clothespin on the top of the makeup sponge and then you have more of a handle. So I didn't try it for this because I needed a little bit more control but the next time I do a larger stencil I'm definitely going to try that tip. Peeling off the stencil I went really slow and I did 
miss some pieces, but that's why you've got your little picker tool. You can go ahead and just very gently help it along and get all of that vinyl off. I had planned on distressing this piece on the front, but I wasn't planning on that big chunk. But you know what? I would decided to work with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and try and scrape off a little bit more. I tried maybe with the little picker tool to pull off some paint and it did work for a little bit, but then I resorted to sandpaper. So where I painted the brown on the shim and on the bottom piece, you could see that brown color coming through but where I sanded it on the top where there was just the brown stain it wasn't deep enough so I just took a little brush and some of that brown paint and just went over it so it would look the same as the distressing at the bottom. I also sanded over the letters a little bit just to give them more of a faded look that just ended up getting a few little scratches through them and it made it look more in tune with the rest of the crate. I wanted to have a little bit of burlap hanging over the sides of the crate. I thought that would make it look sweet. So I decided to line the whole thing just to make sure that any moss or anything small that I added wouldn't fall through the holes. Now because this box is super deep, I didn't want to fill it all with styrofoam because that is just a waste. So I took this little piece of box, laid it in there upside down, glued it, added a couple pieces of styrofoam on the side to hold it in place, and then put my styrofoam on the top with hot glue. Since this is a spring DIY, and of course we're all looking forward to spring, I decided to use these pretty little purple crocuses that I picked up last year at a dollar store. I can't remember which one. And I'm just going to go ahead and poke them into the styrofoam using a little bit of hot glue to secure them in place. When you're working with styrofoam, you don't want to use a lot of hot glue because that's going to melt the styrofoam around it and everything will flop over. I wanted these to stand up nice and straight. So any of them that were bendy, I just kind of bent them back into place and made sure that they were standing up nice and tall. Then I added some bushes of dusty basil which is sort of like a boxwood that has that lamb's ear look and I filled the bottom with moss. The second project I have for you today is using this sign that I got from my Dollarama store. I really like it because it has a good size and the wood frame around it is nice. It has good texture and great bones, but I don't like what it says on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. But first, I'm going to create a little barn door on the bottom half. The pieces I'm using are these wood garden stakes that I get in the springtime and summer at my dollar store. I'm running low, so I'm hopeful that they're going to be out soon. But you could also use giant popsicle sticks. You could use some shims. Anything that you have hanging around would be great. I'm going to just cut them to the length of what I need with my miter shears. I glued these pieces, one at the bottom and one about halfway up, just using hot glue. Now it's time to figure out the angles of the barn doors and it always confuses me. I get a little mixed up and I got even more mixed up because I had to use smaller pieces and try and make them fit. I had run out of the longer pieces of these garden stakes so I just am going to try and fit things together the best I can. So because I had to use bits and pieces, I've got somewhat of a hole in the center of this, but I'm just going to take some wood filler, fill all of that in, and then just let it dry for a few hours and then sand it down so it's nice and smooth. I'm using some masking tape to tape off the frame because as I said earlier, it has a really nice wood look to it and I didn't want to get any gray paint on it. 
I'm using Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in the color Maui Sand, which is a deep charcoal gray. And I'm going to give it two coats to make sure that all of that lettering and that floral and the blue gets covered really well. The top part of the frame had some brown showing through, so I'm just taking some of my linen white chalk paint and giving it a fresh look. This time I cut out the decals with my Cricut Joy and I'm going to just place those on the sign. Once I had the decal on, I didn't like the dry brush look of the X for the barn door, so I decided to go ahead and paint it solid white. I gave it a couple of coats and then cleaned up the edges where I messed up. I'm adding some greenery for the base of what I want to do with the florals and I'm sort of doing it in a swag type of look so they're just all going to be hanging down. Then I'm going to put a few layers of the lavender and then I'll add some more smaller pieces of greenery in between to fill it out. For the final touch, I added a little bit of gray and dry brush just around the edges of the barn door pieces. Don't forget to check out the playlist link and see what all of my other creator friends have done for this collab. If you like this kind of content, I would love for you to stick around. Hit that subscribe button. Those two black arrows will show you exactly where to click. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.